Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, I was planning to TikTok my remarks this evening, <laughs> but I realize now that might be a mistake. Um, uh, my, uh, my friend and colleague, Jeremy Hymans, who will be receiving the award this evening, uh, is an Australian. Um, as, as you can tell, I'm not. And every time he has the opportunity to introduce me, we've spoken a lot over recent years about the book we wrote together, he, without failing, will introduce me as Henry, his colonial oppressor. <laughs> um, so I, I was somewhat surprised he invited me to introduce him this evening. It gives me a chance to uh, return the favor somewhat. Um, as, a point, uh, as a point of clarification, I'm actually half British and half American. I'm half and half, which means, of course, I understand the rules of cricket and baseball. Um, <laughs> I can take full credit for Shakespeare and Robert Frost. Um, and I can enjoy both fish and chips and hot dogs. Uh, the downside, of course, is, is, is real as well. Uh, I have bad teeth and a bad healthcare system. Um, I, I'm responsible for both Boris and Trump. Uh, and, and, and I'm terrible in bed, but, but go... <laughs> But, but go around the world in the face of all evidence claiming I'm the greatest the world has ever seen. <laughs> so, uh, by, by way of introduction, my honor this evening is to present uh, the medal to my colleague and friend, Jeremy Hymans. Uh, Jeremy's story is, is genuinely a, a, a remarkable one and, and one which is inspirational to us all at just age eight. Uh, think back for a moment about what you were doing at age eight. At age eight, Jeremy was nobly and earnestly starting movements using new technology to try and change the world. He, at age eight, launched a campaign using the fax machine to get people to fax world leaders to take stands on issues like nuclear disarmament. And that work he did as a child continued through his adult career. He had stints at Harvard. He had stints at McKinsey. He started a PhD at Oxford uh, and then decided to leave. Uh, his advisor said to him, Jeremy, the world needs more activists and fewer academics. Um, so it proved to be true. And just think about some of the things that Jeremy has achieved in the early stage, this is still the early stage of his career, he founded the organization Get Up in Australia. Get Up is a political movement he launched, co-founded in Australia, which now has more members than all of the political parties in Australia combined, using new technology to find ways to give voice to people who have been left out of a conversation around politics in Australia. He co-founded two Avars. Uh, Avars uh, and this is not overstatement, is the biggest citizen online movement in the world. 50 million people, 50 million people around this world have been connected to fight for the causes that the Foreign Policy Association believes in through the work Jeremy and his colleagues did to get that off the ground. He launched two. He co-founded the All Out Movement. The All Out Movement has done groundbreaking work, of course, to help support LGBT causes all around the world. And by that point, he is not done. He also then co-founds Purpose. Purpose is an extraordinary organization I've had the good fortune to work closely with. And their job in the world is to build movements and to start campaigns that make the world more just, more open, and more habitable. At Purpose, they don't just talk about changing the world. It is the work that they do every single day of the year. And that work has led to groundbreaking collaborations in areas like climate change, refugee rights, LGBT rights. And on top of all that, he wrote with me uh, the, the groundbreaking, best-selling book, <laughs> uh, New Power, described by David Brooks as the best window he's seen into our new world, and nominated for the F.T. McKinsey Prize last year. So he did all of that before he hit 40. Um, and if you think about a life, you think about how you uh, measure a life, think about all of us and how we measure a life. Um, David Brooks once wrote about the idea that we have two things in our world. We have resume virtues and we have eulogy virtues. What is the difference between the two? 
The resume virtues are those things you do with your career, the jobs that you have, the, the promotions you get. The eulogy virtues are those things that at the end of your life you wish people would think about what you had done with your time. And for most people, your resume virtues and your eulogy virtues are different. The things you do with your career are not actually necessarily the things you would most want to be remembered by. Jeremy is one of those very few people whose resume virtues and his eulogy virtues are actually the same. The things he has done with his remarkable talents are indeed the things he would most want to be remembered for. And for all of the accolades and achievements he has rightly won over the years, the truth of the matter is, is that at its heart, the thing that Jeremy takes most seriously isn't how the world sees him, but how he sees himself. And this evening, as he is honored by the FPA medal, I think I can say with my hand on his heart as a dear friend, your eight-year-old self will be very, very proud. Congratulations. Congratulations.